as you can see it's been a frosty morning still got frost on this cushion and on the decking paths as well so it's it's a nippy one and we're going to get all the straw used in the garden to protect So it's actually been a full week now since I chopped up these unsettai bananas and they've had the sulphur on and they've really dried out well apart from because they've been in the greenhouse I've had a bit of dripping from condensation from the roof in a few places on these but that, that should be okay so I'm going to pop these up now now that the surfaces have all dried off and bring them into the house where it's nice and warm and over winter lots and lots of new plants so start to grow off these cut sections and that's how I will propagate these Onsete bananas. So these are some of the Onsete sections that have been potted up in perlite and multi-purpose compost, not watered, just left as they were and these are going to stay in relative warmth so it's in the bathroom these. I've got some in other parts of the house and also the greenhouse and these hopefully will show growth points over the next few months which normally should start around here and work its way over all these old leaf bases will die back which is expected and the growth will come out of here sort of like eyes on a potato growing and this will be watered before it gets completely dry because there will be roots growing out the bottom in a few weeks time so it will need some water but for now it needs nothing until we see those growth points in a few months time. So that is Anibas and Montbelliardii sections potted up and waiting for growth. So these large fleece bags here are great for covering small, medium to large plants because they come in various sizes but this large one is 1.8 metres tall and it's pretty wide as well, it's got a drawstring on the bottom and it's a really good thick fleece as well and it still lets the air in and moisture in as well a little bit which is needed and good for airflow. So this will go over a couple of my half hardy palms. So that's my Trachycarpus oreophyllus protected for winter. Just got the weed suppressing membrane around the base, the black part there, and then this big fleece bag over the top. Now some palms really don't like being wrapped up for a long time. It's trial and error to find out which ones do, but this track of carpus doesn't seem to mind it. But uh, Washingtonia robustas really don't like it at all. But sometimes you just have to for short periods to get the worst of the weather off. But this palm, hopefully, they're already fireless. It was fine last winter, wrapped up like this, and it is pretty loose if we're just getting closer. It's very, very, very loose. Now what will happen is where the leaves are touching these points here, touching the fleece bag, when it gets really cold they will brown off. But the air is protected and slowed down inside the fleece bag, that's the insulation, and that will mean that the centre of the plant and the lower leaves will hopefully remain green all winter. So when I remove this in spring, or when it warms up, it will, it will look fine and carry on growing next year. And here's a protection for the Trachycarpus martianus, which is a tender Trachycarpus palm. It's got some old rubber tyres around the trunk. And then I've got a fleece ready and a bit of polycarbonate ready. So if it gets cold, I can just put the fleece and polycarbonate over the top of the tyres to insulate the palm. And when it warms up, I'll just take them off like I've done today. And it is still pretty pretty mild really, even though we've had a frost we still have a little tomato plant growing underneath this palm tree so it's not too cold yet 
not in every part of the garden at least. Here is a Colocasia pink china. It's actually growing in the pond in a pot. And as you can see the leaves are still green. That is because the water is insulating the heat source, should I say, and keeping the temperature warmer than just on the edges and the rest of the garden where all the pink chinas have all died off and browned down by the pond it's still green, still growing and that'll stay in there all winter and we'll find out next spring if it survives and grows back Now I said a few weeks ago that I've dug up all my aeoniums and that's not strictly true because I didn't have space for all of them in the greenhouse so there's a few out still in the garden and they've taken several frosts but they have had just this just a sheet of fleece literally thrown on like that and that's all what's been needed to keep these looking in good condition I'm not expecting them to survive winter but we'll see how far they'll go I have had them survive winter one year and then they grew amazingly well the following year so let's see let's see if I have a mild winter if we can get these through fingers crossed yes again now this bale of straw is what I'm going to use to protect my tree ferns and all the plants in the ground and the musabaju later as well and it's really economical so this large bale is actually called a, a small bale but it's a lot of straw this only costs three pounds and it will cover a large area and be used on a lot of plants so it's well worth the money so I'll use this uh, around the garden now So we're going to protect this tree fern here, just with some straw and we're going to put the straw in the crown of the plant and that's where next year's fronds will come from and if you come closer in you'll see that in the centre it's like a depression in the middle so there's space to put the straw so let's put a bit of that in just shove that down and pack it in and have a nice pile of it just on top like that And that's all I'll do. So I'll continue to do this with my other tree ferns in this area. And that's all the protection I'll give it unless we get some really cold weather. And if all the leaves blacken off, then I'll cut the leaves off and I'll cover the full trunk of the tree fern. But if it does get that cold, I'll show that in another video where we protect the full tree fern. And these tree ferns here, so we've got one here. We've got one down there, and over my shoulder, we've got another one by the fence. These have been in the ground for several years, and these have got a good root supply, get lots of moisture from the ground. In another part of the garden, we've got some newly planted tree ferns, which I'll protect in a slightly different way. So we'll move on to those in a minute. So these are tree ferns that I planted just a few months ago, so they're not established in the ground and they've not really got many roots to uptake water throughout the winter. So these will dry out really quickly. And as you can see, they're quite unstable because they're not rooted and they're very, very dry. So before I put straw in the tops of these, and there's several around here, I'm going to give them a really, really good soaking of water just to get them nice and wet and then I'll put the straw in the tops of these. So I'll just do that now. And I'll do this for several minutes to give them a really, really good soaking. Now these are very well soaked with water. I'll do the same as the others and put the straw in the top. Wash that down. Insulate the top of the tree fern. This is a double, so there's one over here to do as well. That's all I'll do until the leaves brown off and we see if the weather gets a lot colder or not. 
So this Cyathea tree fern is different from the Dicksonias. I don't want to get the crown really wet and full of water, so I'm not watering this one, but it is pretty well rooted in the ground now. This is not a hardy tree fern. It is pretty tender, and if it gets through winter, it'll be very, very lucky. But I'm going to try to protect it, so what I'm going to do is actually put straw all around here and on the top and insulate the full plant, apart from the leaves which will blacken off. But the full plant I'm going to cover in straw all over the top. And all around. Hopefully that'll be enough. Give it some all the winter to get it through. Very messy this straw, but it does a good job. So I finished off the Sayathia tree fern by putting these old car tires over the plant, putting lots of fleece in the top there. And then I'm just going to put this just over the top to stop the most of the water getting in, any rain I mean. So I'll keep it nice and snug and warm and dry. And hopefully that will be enough to see this get through winter. These leaves obviously will, will brown off and die anyway, so they'll be removed. And that is Saphir sorted for. So now I'm going to use a straw to protect this bed, which has got cannas, begonias, and the collocasia's pink china. As you can see, I've started putting straw over here. I'm going to break up a bit, and just scatter it over the top. It wants to be quite thick, but it wants to use, be used to insulate the ground, stop the frost penetrating down to the roots of the plants. It is quite messy, but it does a good job. Now I know that's hardy plants there, so I don't need to go any further this way. I'll carry on doing the rest of the beds. And now I've chosen to cover up the straw. I've got some old plywood boards and some bubble wrap on that side and similar on this side as well. I'll cover up the rest if I find enough materials to hand. And this will keep the straw in place and also keep it relatively dry as well underneath there. So it'll keep the straw more insulated because it's kept dry. It's not 100% necessary to do that but it just sort of uh, helps a little bit and as these materials were to hand I thought I'd best make use of them. It doesn't look pretty, but the way the garden's designed is this is the second half of the garden that you don't see from the house. So it's okay for this area to look like this over winter because nobody really comes down here apart from me and the viewers of these videos. And closer to the house, that's where we've got the green space, evergreens, like the bamboos. So you don't see what's going on at the end of the garden. So although we've had another frost last night, the week ahead looks like we'll get a mild patch, so we're getting temperatures of about 14 degrees in the day for two or three days midweek. But it cools again next weekend, but nothing too scary. So I'm not concerned yet about wrapping the Muzabaju or taking the tree fern protection any further. Now I want to show you something peculiar about this Muzabaju and this clump is unusual because it's been growing for over 10 years but it's never flowered so it means the base of some of these stems are 10 years old which is unusual and what it has meant is a couple of them are looking quite wobbly and rotten because basically they're just really old so this one here it's just rotted off at the base, it just fell over Nothing to do with cold or anything else, it's just because the base is so old, it's just not sustained this stem. 
because it did get cut back to the ground after 2010. But the bases of the plants, obviously, at least at that age, some of these are new stems completely from the ground, like this massive one since 2010, and that's very, very stable. These front ones are the new ones. But the back ones over there are very wobbly. I think they may they may rot over winter this year or into next spring. We'll have to have to see what happens. But there are plenty of little pups growing. So if I put straw around the base of these, they'll come through winter nicely. So I will put straw over the ground around these. And if it gets very cold, I'll put a straw cage around the full plants. But at the moment, they're still green and still looking okay. So my plant of the week this week is this yucca and this is yucca faxonia and it's a hardy yucca down to at least minus 10 but it grows huge, it'll grow a big trunk and it'll grow several meters tall and branch eventually over many many years and what I like especially about this yucca as well as it being pretty hardy as along the leaf sides and margins you got these curls coming out the sides so it makes it quite unusual quite pretty still got the the daggers at the end the spikes at the end but it's a really really interesting hardy yucca and like I said over many many years it will grow a big trunk and as you can see at the base there it's already got the starting of a trunk which is about about 20 centimetres wide so over the decades to come fingers crossed it will grow high up into the sky and be a very substantial plant in the garden so that is yucca faxionia and that is my plant of the week now these are my carnivorous plants that I'm trying this year, it's the first time I've grown them. So we've got the pitcher plants here, and we've got the Venus fly traps here. Now these Venus fly traps, especially, should be going dormant now, should be dying back to the central rosette. And these pitchers, a lot of these will die back as well. Some will remain, and they should be quite hardy. These, so we'll give them a go. They're in perlite and heat and I'll keep them on the drier side in winter so I'll put them behind the greenhouse and hopefully they'll they'll come back next year there's quite a few types one comes from the up in the moors so that should be very very hardy and the really interesting plants I might even plant out at some point hopefully they'll get through the first winter Fingers crossed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. Tune in next week while we're doing more winter jobs and looking at more interesting plants that can be grown in the north of England. Stay tuned.